Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea ESS 3A. It's on natural resources. Resources are what we require to live. And since we live on the Earth, we get our resources from the Earth, and we call those natural resources. And there's a lot of different types of natural resources. It could be the air you breathe, the water you drink, the soil you grow your crops in, minerals, metals, energy, plants, animals. And all of this we're getting from our environment. And we could break all of those natural resources into two types. We have what are called renewable resources. Wind's an example of energy that's renewable. As the sun shines on the earth, the air starts to move around, and we're going to be able to generate energy from that. Non-renewable resources are resources that don't come back within our lifetime. And so oil is an example of that. Oil contains energy that was stored millions of years ago from ancient rainforests, and if we use that up, it's gone. It's not going to come back, at least within our lifetime. Another thing you should understand about natural resources is that they're not uniformly distributed on our planet. They're going to be mixed up. And so where do humans live? We're living where we can get as many of the resources as we can possibly find. But we're not going to have all the resources there. And so if you look at the distribution of humans on our planet, we're going to find that we're finding that we're living in areas where we can get enough food, enough water, but we don't get all of our resources. So we have to kind of trade and ship those around on our planet. This map right here shows the population, in other words, the cities that have high population. Each of the red dots on this map represents a city with at least a million people. We call those mega cities. And what we're finding is that as you get more and more people on our planet, they're requiring more and more resources. And so we have to really balance our use of non-renewable resources, especially if they have some detrimental costs. And thinking of that, Fossil fuels are really driving economies right now, coal and oil. And what's the benefit of coal and oil? They're relatively cheap. We stored energy a long time ago, and now we can kind of cash in on that. The problem is that we have costs associated with non-renewable resources. Um, number one, they're not going to last forever. And number two, a lot of them have unintended consequences. We, as we burn fossil fuels, we're putting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And that, over time, is going to increase the temperature. And then we're going to have costs associated with that. And so what we're seeing is a switch from non-renewable to renewable resources. And that's being driven by two things. Number one is technology. Solar energy wasn't very effective, and it was really expensive uh, you know, decades ago, but that's changing really, really quickly. And things like geothermal, hydroelectric, um, wind generation uh, is, is generating more energy, and it's a more valuable resource, and it will be over time. We'll also have to use regulations. In other words, when you put things into the atmosphere, you're not really being penalized for that. You're putting carbon into the atmosphere, it's going to have some unintended consequences in the future. And so we'll have to use wise regulations and increasing technology to shift from non-renewable to renewable resources. And so how do you teach this? What's the teaching progression? Well, in the lower elementary grades, you want students to understand that humans require resources. And they require it from the land, the air, and the water. And so let's use a real simple example of that. What do we need from the land? Well, we need food. And so when we grow corn, for example, we need nutrients from the land or the soil. We need nutrients from the air. And we also need water for that. If we get energy from our environment, burning wood is going to require energy. And that's coming from the land as well. And if we want to fry up some eggs, we're going to require minerals. And we're going to have to get that from the land as well. And so everything we require for resources, we're getting from the land itself. As we move into the upper elementary grades, you want to start talking about this idea of natural resources and that all of the resources we require to live have to come from our planet. Another thing you should talk about at this point is make sure you're delineating the difference between a renewable resource, one that we can just, it comes back over our lifetime, and non-renewable resources. So as we dig up metal, if we aren't recycling those, if we're just disposing of it, it's going to be a non-renewable resource. 
As you move into middle school, we want to talk about resources and where they're found and that they're limited and that they're not evenly distributed on our planet. And so we have to be wise in the way that we're using those resources. And then we want to talk about how there's going to be increases in technology which are going to allow us to shift from non-renewable to renewable resources. But we're going to have to use regulations to make sure that we're doing this fairly and effectively across the globe. As you move into high school, you want to address this idea that our population is increasing. And as we get more and more people, they're going to require more and more resources. And so we have to look at all of the resources on our planet. Where are they found? How can we share them equally? And how can we make sure that as people in developing countries start to get what people in developed countries have had for a long time, how do we do that effectively without damaging the planet? So those are natural resources. They're incredibly important. And I hope that was helpful.